And so I started to do this kind of with my normal life was to not get wrapped up in my own emotions, not get wrapped up in the, the, the gun fight that was happening right in front of my face, not to get wrapped up in the details of what was going on, but instead take a step back, detach, look around, and then you can make a be much, much better decision. And then I do not drink caffeine right away. It's important in many ways to delay caffeine enough so that you can clear out some of the chemical signals in the brain and body that lead to a feeling of fatigue. So the longer you're mm. awake, the more a molecule called adenosine builds up in your system. And when you sleep, you push that adenosine level back down. When you wake up in the morning, that adenosine level can be zero, but oftentimes there's still some hanging around. Caffeine is an adenosine antagonist. It blocks adenosine function. It's a little more complicated than that, but that's effectively what it does. So if you wake up and you've got, let's say 20%, let's make, uh, this is arbitrary, but 20% of your adenosine has still hasn't been cleared out. That's sort of a drowsiness that you woke up with. How afraid are you not of not making a change? Let's make a little vision of that. You're 35, you hate your job, what's the consequence? You're not motivated, you don't want to get out of bed in the morning, you're starting to get depressed, you're getting bitter, you're getting resentful, you're getting cynical, you're amotivated at work, you're not doing a very good job, and you're starting to shrink. Now play that out for 10 years. You don't change it, you don't fix it. And what happens? Well, it's not like it's going to get better of its own accord. And we're not talking sprints. The, there's just a myriad of effects on heart health, uh, you know, vascular health all over the body, gut microbiome, mus Everything. musculoskeletal yeah. stability, mental health, all these kinds of things. So I have a routine where I either weight train for an hour in the morning or I do a portion of that weekly cardio. Mm -hmm. And I just alternate weight train one day, cardio the next weight train. And then one day a week, I don't do anything. I don't do any exercise. Then I would shower and then do my 90 work minute workout. But sometimes I do the 90 minute workout first. Mm -hmm. And that's generally what when I'm starting to drink the caffeine. Remember to learn your limits because the takers don't have any. Uh, look, this is something that has crossed my mind many times throughout life. And I began to identify it a little bit more effectively in recent times. But it's all about really creating value within yourself and also creating boundaries within yourself as well. So be sure to value the time you spend with others, value the time you give to your boss, and also value the time you give to yourself. Because if you don't, you're just gonna burn out. So all the best. In order to succeed, we first must believe that we can. We tend to measure success by the amount of money that we earn, the accolades that we get, achievements that we make, or just simple recognition from others. To most people, that is enough. But if we're trying to find a way to finish a task or see the future in a better light, then a lot of us tend to find that we're lost most of the time. And it's only through some form of visualization that can actually begin to steamroll the whole process of change uh, in someone's life. Sometimes we may just close our eyes and have a deep moment of clarity, personal thought, even explore those options in our dreams and suddenly wake up but we're still in the same place. But it's in those quiet moments that we can actually grasp an idea that may present it itself in that dream or in that thought process. And that can be the key to your success in being able to undertake a task that you want to achieve. And that ideally can help us believe that we can achieve what it is that needs to be done. Just because my path is different doesn't mean I'm lost. In healthcare services, this is commonly referred to as dignity of risk. You're giving someone the opportunity to try something new or make a decision based on the way that they choose to live, realizing that inherent level of risk with anything that you choose to do in this day and age. But giving them the dignity of risk to be able to assess what it is that they want and what they need is more important than anything. It's a human right to be able to make a decision for what you believe is right in your life. So just because my path is different doesn't mean I'm lost. It allows us to realize that there's people out there with needs other than our own that need 
to be considered. As humans, we constantly make assumptions on one another, not realizing that uh, we are multi-layered individuals that present on a daily basis, whether it be work colleagues, friends, family, business associates, strangers on the street, person in the shop. And with the way that we see other people presenting, we may automatically assume that they don't have it all together. They could be having a bad day. They could be in a situation where they don't want to be at. Just because they don't have a situation that they can't cope with at any given moment, doesn't mean they don't have it all together or they're not exactly lost. A lot of people lack exclusivity in this day and age when we're putting all of our lives out there on social media or just generally disclosing too much information about ourselves. In some ways, you have to agree to disagree with somebody else's decision making. Your energy introduces you even before you speak. I work as a support worker. My clients have a very complex mental health issues and present with comorbidities on top of that. If I was to present myself to them daily with a negative mindset, chances are that the time spent with them will not be productive. This could potentially throw their progress off, the partnership that we have as a support worker with the client and the rapport that's been built over time. This is an example of how your mindset and your attitude externally presents itself to others around you, in your life, with your circle of friends, with your work colleagues, potential new business clients overall, or just being out in general public. Be mindful of yourself and the type of person you wanna be, but also how you wanna be treated as well. You wanna be a magnet to those around you. We wanna draw them in, you have reason to be in your life, and likewise for you in theirs as well. Make it a positive one.